This past season hasn't been the best for us for our adventures. Working full time has added to the restrictions and just about every opportunity we have had to explore, the weather hasn't permitted. When I planned to do the Papadoa, it was the last minute decision if we would go. Again, it was weather dependent to my days off and availability in the huts when we would need to stay at. Finally, we were given a perfect window on the weather. I only booked a few days prior and quickly got ourselves organised to go. The plan was spend two to three nights on the Papadoa. We didn't plan to do the full trek as I didn't have the time to book the transfer or the bus so we would start from Smoke Ho Car Park, head to Cess Clark Hut for the first night, hike the tops to the Moonlight Tops Hut for the night and make our way back the way we came. It wasn't the most ideal plan but we just went with it and it was just exciting to get out and do another adventure. We drove 30 minutes down the road until I realised that I had forgotten my Garmin GPS so we had to turn back and get that. But the Papadoa is only one and a half hours away from home so we weren't pushed for time. We arrived at the car park around 10.30 and we were anxious and excited to tick off our first great walk. I sent a text message to my husband to let him know that we had arrived and that we are about to begin. We read the information part as well just in case there's anything extra that we needed to know. And then finally, in the low cloud amongst the fog, we started making our way on the Great Walk. This is such a beautiful hike that follows the Black Bull Creek. The boys enjoyed the three swing bridges and the historical hotel areas that had a picnic table perfect for a break and snack. Here we saw our first couple of hikers making their way to Cess Clark Hut also. We always get so excited to see other people out here doing their thing and hiking as well. But also at this point it marked the time when the boys decided that they both no longer wanted to carry their backpacks, opting for me to be their pack mule. Spirits were high so I didn't want to make things difficult early on so I managed to attach everything to my pack and just bear the weight. As the track started to slowly add some more incline I was quite pleasantly surprised that the steep sections weren't as steep as I expected. This great walk is suited for bikes so I guess it couldn't be too steep. We managed it at a great pace passing the ladies we saw and we didn't see them again until the next hut. The boys enjoyed checking out some of the big fallen trunks and Nico struggled to count the age of this giant tree. Or it might be a thousand years old. It's a thousand years old. It was a thousand. We were so excited to discover the one kilometre to the hut sign, especially in my shoulders. The cloud blanketed the view as we popped out of the bush and in a short 15 minutes we retreated to the hut hiding amongst the cloud. Mm. When we arrived there were already others at the hut and it was quite funny to watch their reaction to see my pack. I always enjoy watching how the boys get so excited about staying in a hut and how much energy they have after a long walk. After getting settled and having a stretch, the clouds finally cleared and revealed the most beautiful views of the Grey River Valley and all the farmlands below. It was truly magic.
We became acquainted with all the guests in the hut over dinner. The boys played card games while I made arrangements for the next day. The wind was forecast to be quite rough and I was a little concerned for the boys walking along the exposed tops in a strong wind. I made a plan that we would get up and leave early to try beat the wind and inform the others that we would do so and apologised in advance if we would wake anyone. The next day I had my alarm set for 6 o'clock and I had a conversation with the boys the night before that we were to be dead silent and not talk until we left the hut. I was so proud of the boys as they actually followed through. And then as the sun started to clever some light, we were making our way to the tops and thankfully no wind just yet. This section of the Paparoa is absolutely breathtaking and I couldn't believe how lucky we were to be treated to a sunset coming up over and shining on Mount Aoraki. This section of the Paparoa is only signposted for three hours and honestly the views are 360 as long as you can time this on a great weather day. You can see Lake Brunner in the back as well as Cess Clark Hut where we just left. As we got up around to the highest point of the Paparoa, thankfully we had skipped most of the strong wind as it was starting to pick up around now. We started weaving our way back down and came across the one kilometre to the hut sign and were incredibly excited as the boys were quite cold and over it. Oh my goodness, look at that. After walking just under four hours, we were the first to arrive at the hut and so I lit the fire and set up our beds in the smaller room. I'm incredibly glad I made the decision to leave early as the wind picked up significantly and it would have been miserable to hike in for the boys. We had planned to explore the track further for the day and visit the Pipe River Mine Memorial, but it was too cold and exposed with the strong winds. Gradually, everyone else arrived and praised the boys with how quiet they were in the morning. We just played card games, read stories, and just enjoyed the beautiful views. And the sunset from the Moonlight Hut was incredible. On our last day, we started making our way back to Cease Clark Hut. The wind was the same as the day before, but wearing all the right gear kept us nice and warm. The 360 views again were just as beautiful going the other way.
I had booked the Cess Clark hut for another night but had the option to walk the whole way out. We arrived at the hut just before lunch and I knew that the boys would rather keep going. So after a rest and something to eat, we started making our way back down to the car park. The Paparoa is such a beautiful walk and a great one for our first great walk. All the huts have gas facilities supplied so you just need to carry your own cooking gear. This walk I found incredibly easy compared to what we are used to. So if you are thinking about a multi-day hike, definitely consider this one. Try and plan for a clear weather as the range is blanketed by cloud frequently. Today we walked a full 20 kilometers, and in total we walked 40 kilometers all up. I hope you enjoyed coming on the Papadoa track with us and we hope to see you next Sunday. Ka kite. Thank you.